good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session i hope uh, um ankita deepthi anuhya sangeeta dr soni khanna jaydeep and many more across the country who are uh, attending this session there is a little part left in dermatology that we will take it up uh, tomorrow what are the subjects for the neat pg whenever we want to open the book and study we feel very bored we need somebody to tell us rather than we open the book and read what are those subjects can you please punch is my voice loud and clear yes ophthalmology when we go for ent ophthalmology posting clinical posting two three days we will be watching into patients eyes nobody will teach you anything beyond lens after that we start looking into the eyes of our classmates which are much more beautiful and uh, slowly we will start attending once in a week and uh, that one month posting will be over there are medical students who finish mbbs without knowing what is uvl tract also what is uvl tract iris iccu iris ciliary body choroid right so that is a challenge graslin rightly said physiology also oh my god what a dry subject similarly skin anesthesia radiology psychiatry unless we have our own skin problems which are not uncommon at that age and uh, our own psychiatric illnesses except that our exposure is very little and uh, to mug all those things in for entrance exam become challenging so is there any way out of the situation in ophthalmology doctor last 15 years if you take pgi there are 188 questions aims may 245 questions all india may 453 questions in the last 15 years at least the 700 or 9 800 questions are there if you can quickly run through that is more than enough for ophthalmology depending upon the case four five four five important points if you can be able to catch up here and there 10 out of 10 in ophthalmology you can be able to score all my greediness is can i help you in the next five to six evenings to make you to revise the seven eight hundred questions and uh, the 20 topics into which these things fall so let us make the great beginning topical steroids where can you use is a very important question in diskiform keratitis anterior uveitis and pars planitis are the scenarios where you can use the steroids not in the herpetic dendritic ulcer but uh, in diskiform keratitis is what i want to underscore to all of you so what is diskiform keratitis of the herpes it is a delayed hypersensitivity reaction like your mantu for the herpes simplex virus that leads to endothelitis and that lead to a disc formation in the corneal edema because the corneal edema and there is a lot of imbibition of the aqueous humor and that decreases the corneal sensation and it can even sometimes raise the intraocular tension because of trabeculitis all this itis 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 means inflammation so there you can be able to use diskiform keratitis of hsv you can use the steroid but not in herpetic keratitis or herpetic dendritis is what you have to and particularly remember so what are the important indications for the topical therapy you give corticosteroid topical therapy for stromal keratitis 
Disciform endothelitis, otherwise called disciform keratitis. Iridocyclitis, trabeculitis, marginal keratitis. In all these scenarios, corticosteroid is the one which is basically used. And for the HSV blepharitis, conjunctivitis, corneal epithelial disease, that is the keratitis and stromal keratitis, you will be using the antiviral treatment is what you need to fundamentally understand. What is the etiology of the cataract? Very, very fundamental question. How did we, what are the two topics we studied and passed the entire MBBS doctor, ophthalmology? Cataract, glaucoma. Agar in the examination, we can't tell whether it's an immature or mature cataract. One thing if you can tell, examiner will say, get out. You are passed out of the ophthalmology. Don't show me your dirty face once more, he will say. But entrance, you need to know more finer things, right? Yes. So, hypocalcemia, obesity, steroids, chloroquine. They are all implicated in cataract. So, you should know the list of the causes of the cataract, one of the favorite area for the examiner. Hypocalcemia, please don't forget, then cataract. Now, painful loss of vision, painless loss of vision, sudden painless loss of vision, gradual painless loss of vision. There are three dirty lists you have to remember when you are going for the NEET PG exam doctor. Inevitably, one question will come, right? When it is inevitable, better read, master and win your fear about the elephant. So, doctor, primary angle closure glaucoma, anterior uveitis, intermediate uveitis, they are all painless loss of vision. So, what are the causes of gradual painless loss of vision? There are various mnemonics you can try to remember various ways. So, chronic simple glaucoma, senile cataract, developmental cataract, corneal dystrophies, degenerations, diabetic retinopathy, vitreous degeneration, drugs like ethambidol, we don't prefer to give it in the very young children because they can't tell the loss of vision, which is very gradual and painless. Then demyelinating disorders, hypertensive retinopathy, optic atrophy, progressive pterygium, refractory errors, they are all implicated in the gradual painless loss of vision. But you don't remember this list. Useless list. Ask your friends to remember. This is what you need to remember. Painful loss of vision. Uska causes kya hai is a favorite question. Acute angle closure glaucoma, acute iridocyclitis, acute keratitis, any trauma, foreign body or Acute optic neuritis, endophthalmitis, panophthalmitis, they are all the painful loss of vision causes. Then if you look at sudden painless loss of vision, there are two causes which you have to basically remember doctor. One is central retinal artery occlusion, other is the retinal detachment. Commonly examiner will ask you, based on the history with the sudden painless loss of vision as the history, how do you differentiate between the two is a favorite question of the examiner. Painless unilateral visual loss usually with the background of hypertension or ischemic heart disease must make you to think about central retinal artery occlusion is what you have to basically remember. And whenever the retinal artery is occluded that will affect the optic nerve that is the reason it will lead to Afferent pupillary defect. What is meant by relative afferent pupillary defect? It is also called Marcus gun pupil, as all of you know. When you throw the light, you are expecting the pupil to constrict. But if the optic nerve is affected, if you throw the light, the pupil does not constrict. Not only it does not constrict, even the consensual light reflex also is not there. So, that is called as the afferent pupillary defect. Similarly, cherry red spot against a white ischemic retina, narrowing of the arterioles, that is central retinal artery occlusion presenting a sudden painless loss of vision is what you have to basically remember. We give 
intravenous acetazolamide, the massage of the globe to lower the intraocular pressure and you need to treat it as an ophthalmic emergency and refer the patient immediately is considered to be the management of choice which you should not forget. Whereas retinal detachment, classically patient will give you flashes, floaters before his eyes. That is what you, similarly curtain coming down is a history that you hear in the retinal detachment. And there is a decreased visual acuity, especially when the macula is involved in that ret detached retina. Typically uh, macula is a very central area for visual acuity. If that is affected and uh, surgical cryotherapy you need to do and uh, white rectomy to relieve the traction who is pulling out the retina in traction little detachment that fibros white rectomy before the retina is pulling it so white rectomy will be required and there you need to refer on the same day so you are not going to forget doctor that 